so yeah. that's why that fucker's founder thing on his Instagram fucked with me. I know. Because you're too busy worried about a fucking title than, than work or integrity or making sure you can actually fucking be something mm -hmm. before you're going and, and putting giving and yourself. do it, right. And you're just giving yourself. Yeah, man, just it bothers me, Give right? Give yourself a pat on the back before you earn it. So when they're talking to me about real estate, I didn't shun it and go, I'm not a soccer mom. Look at me. No, right. I... I was asking questions that pertain to the skill set the job needed. Because everywhere I had gone, man, it was never about title. It was never about awards. It was about the environment I was exposed to and like where I was great at it and what it did for me. So that's how I looked at real estate. What's the environment of real estate and like what that looks like? And mm -hmm. so, dude, I, 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 I commit to it. I, I've got, you know, I was making decent money at Fit Republic, probably 100 grand, 110 grand. And, um, but I had two stupid cars I didn't need. I had, a, I had an apartment and I was not good with money as in i was spending all of it right yeah so i leave it republic kurt gives me 10 grand on my way out like severance pay like hey man i love you i appreciate what you helped build for me yeah i don't got a lot but here's what i do have and i want to give that to you and it's like hey that was cool man yeah. you didn't have to do that that right. was cool and um but that 10 grand was gone in like five minutes because i had two car payments i had an apartment and then my lady we had to go to this wedding in san diego mm -hmm. we just had to yeah had to oh yeah. dude I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. And but long story short, that money was gone quick. Ironically, my apartment was expiring. The lease was expiring that month, so I didn't renew. But dude, everyone wants to make more money, right? Oh yeah. And what I was focused on first was I need to eliminate overhead. I need to eliminate any obligations, so I can focus on studying and getting my license and being a professional. I didn't care about making more money. It's important yet. because a lot of people, they know they need to leave the job they're at. And they're afraid to, yep. and, uh, unable to, or un, un, unwilling to cut but their you expenses. Got, cut you got three hundred thousand yep. dollars of equity on your house. You won't sell exactly. exactly, and go live in an apartment. Like yep. for me, man, like I wasn't concerned about making more money. I was concerned about making sure I was a good product for a consumer. And, People are trusting you with the most yeah. expensive sales and buys of their life. Mm -hmm. You need to be adequate, right? So I, I sold these cars. I get rid of my apartment, and I'm sleeping in. And she was also an Aurora cop. It was my buddy growing up, my best friend growing up. It was his mom. I slept in her Y2K pantry in the basement. Mm -hmm. Like some of us are old now. You might, you probably yeah. don't remember Y two K. Y two K was the original pandemic. Oh yeah, this was when it was a false. Nineteen ninety nine was turning to two thousand, and they were worried that when the computers try to hit two thousand, it was going to shut everything off. So this is when everyone's buying toilet paper and fucking yeah. orange juice or yeah. out, whatever canned yeah, goods. Yeah, yeah. So Probably. dude, I'm sleeping in this fucking pantry. But again, man, like I felt like I was under the gun. I was mm -hmm. under pressure. But I was at peace. With no obligations. You're up. You're back to zero. Almost, I could right? just do that. Yeah. Thirty six bucks to my name, but I could just man. I could just isolate and focus. So I'd wake up. I'd work out. I'd get my mind right. I'd study all day, and then I'd do lift at night, mm -hmm. just to make a couple bucks to just you know have have a little bit of money for food and like. That's where it started, man. And like I think the big lessons here as we kind of creep into present day is what you're willing to sacrifice. Everybody wants to make more. Everybody talks about more. Yep. But like, what are you willing to sacrifice? In order to get it, dude, and like yeah. I just I'd never been wrapped around status. And the status could be what your friends think of you, what your neighbors think of you, because you live in a certain house, or you drive a certain car, or you have a certain title at work, and like you don't want to fucking give it up. For yeah. me, yeah, those things never mattered to me, man. Like I knew like I believed in myself and I knew like I'm betting on me, man. Like status well, I don't, I don't or talk not. About that, no. Because I have a lot yeah. of friends that have seen me transition into this world and do really well. Yep. Hey man, how can I do that? Okay. What's your house worth? How much equity do you have in your home? Do you, can you create a window of opportunity? Uh -huh. And most of them can, Fuck yeah. but they won't. Yep. It's like, well, that's why you'll never get there. Just and, leave it. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I do. Yep. I, I, I plant the seed. Hey, man, you have the tools you need. Yep. If you're not willing, I can't help you. They see the so, result. So they'll see a fancy car or they'll yeah. see a nice office or they'll see something that you've established for yourself. Yep. And they now well, want to. You, I can do that. Well, no, you can't because you don't right. really know me. You but know me, but all they're like, but it's like they're attracted to the result of it. Yeah. Same thing in fitness, man. Like you see a dude with a six pack and stuff, and it's admirable. It's like, man, that guy's jacked. He's nerd. fucking shredded. Fucking six pack. Fucking nerd. But you're all you're doing is attaching <laughs> how much can you yourself. Deadlift? If you got a six pack, how much can you deadlift? No, I'm just kidding. I know. You're well, saying. that's what we do do. I know you're saying. But you attach yourself to what it must feel like to sure. have a six pack and look amazing. You're not. You're not attaching yourself to the workload to that goes there. into it, and yeah. you're not you're not exposed to the yep. commitment. So people they'll see a Lamborghini, or whatever it may be, right? Like, yep. But it's like, hey, dude, it's not about a Lamborghini. Like these are things that I drive, and there's equity in them, and yep. I'm just driving around a bank account. Yep. Like I can sell that, I can make some money on it, no problem. It's still work, but it's like if you're not willing to sacrifice, yeah, no problem. Hey, no problem, but just understand, like you're, 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 you're only going to take it so far. You're, exactly, you're going to mm -hmm. cap out here. Yep. And you can talk to me about that, but you can't bitch to me about that. Because here's, yeah. I'm giving you a blueprint. 
of almost a formula. Here's what you can do to get out of that. But see, that's the thing right and there. You don't want it's to, not what you're capable of. Right, it's willing to do. Okay, you got three hundred grand of equity on yeah. your house. You've got a four hundred one k. You got certain things. Yeah. So absolutely. you're capable of. Yep. You got four, five, six options. It's not what you're capable yep. of. It's what you're willing to do. Yep. Same in sports. It's not what you're capable of talent wise. Yep. It's what you're willing to do to get to the next level, man. Like 100%. those things are super relevant, right? So those have always mattered. So long story short, here I get into real estate, and I, man, like um, you've heard like my son's story when I first found out we were pregnant with yeah. my son two weeks into real estate. Great timing, right? Like yeah. knock a knock somebody up two weeks into a new job, that's new called career. Pressure. We like pressure, dude. That's, it's, that's some real pressure. See, then we're gonna start talking about God. Because this no, is God. Not. No, we're not. Listen to me. We're talking about I'm two something. weeks into real estate. We get God. pregnant, right? <laughs> and um, man, I remember like when I was. God didn't do that. Your dick did that. Just so you know. I, my dick. <laughs> let me just say, my dick's a godsend. Oh, Jesus. Here we okay? go. Okay. Because you see my go. lady. She's hot. And she had me before I had money and I ain't good looking. So what is it then? <laughs> what is it? I got a meat Black hog from hell there. Whatever. Anthony. You even you'd like it. No homo, you'd like even it. Even I'd like it. Jesus Christ. So um, I'm, man, I'm two weeks into real estate. I just get licensed, right? I sell off both these cars. I have no car, no income, no nothing. My mom knows I need a car to get around. And she's like, hey, you know, she may like, my dad is uh, self-employed, mm -hmm. owns a trucking company. So they put her on payroll to just manage some stuff. So she technically showed income and yep. she had great credit. And she's like, I got you. Let's go look at a car. Let's figure it out, right? So we're signing for a car. And um, she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, Mom, I'm this, sure. You want this Prius? Are you sure you want this? Well, no, we had to get a Cadillac, dude, because I had to trade in one truck. I'm kidding. Because her name was on it. It was yeah. upside down. So, Plus, if you're getting into real estate, you don't want to be. You need to have something that looks a little bit nice. For sure. You have to have a little bit of a. And I was, I wouldn't even concern with that. It was just that on a Chevy Malibu, they won't go 120% loan to value. Right. I had to get a Cadillac because it'll carry the bad equity from yep. my truck yep. onto the car. So we get it. And my mom said the my, my most favorite thing she would always tell me growing up. She's like, all right. I got it. Just don't tell your dad. Yep. I fucking love that, yeah. dude. Like, but now that I'm a dad. I have a cool story about that, too. Yeah, yeah. It's like, so she told me. So I was like, I, I made it work. And like, so my buddy that ran that dealership, he's taking my mom home because I'm going right back to the original brokerage I started out. I'm going right back to work. As I'm going to work, man, I get a call and I, I find out that one of my one of my really close friends, one of his business partners and friends, so it was a friend of a friend for me. Yeah. But good dude. But you know him. Got hit on his motorcycle, combat veteran, Marine. Died on scene. Ugh. Got hit by an SUV. SUV ran a light and hit him. And dude, it just hit me so hard. Not because he was like my closest friend. He was a friend. Yeah. But not my closest friend. But like it was just the timing of where I was at in life. I'm driving this car. Like it was my, it was my environment. I'm driving this car that's not mine. Wearing this fucking tie that's not mine. And I'm just like, dude, where did I go wrong, man? Yeah. Like, where did, like, of all like, things you've accomplished. Yeah. Like, now you're where did I think I had it figured out and I should go be fucking entrepreneur? Yeah. Yeah. Where, like, and I, dude, I went all the way back to the Marine Corps. Like, okay, was well, leaving the Marine Corps wrong? Because when I left the Marine Corps, I didn't like government yeah. work that exactly. much. That's what made me want to go home. Yeah. And I went home just like I did when I didn't like baseball. I didn't like government work. I went home to my mommy just like I did there. And like, so should I just stay in the Marine Corps? Because I never would have gone in government work. If I never went to government work, I never would have gone home and done police work, which uh, I never would have met for the public. butterfly effect. I'm just trying to figure out where I made the air. Yeah. And like, I knew enough about me where I'm like, all right, stop. Mm. Like you're, you're fucking, you're uncomfortable with your environment. Like some things aren't going, like you're new to something. Like I know a rabbit hole when I start crawling. Yeah. And I was like, stop, go back to work and just work. So I, I do. And I'm headed home and I call Kate. I tell her, you know, Hey, I'm on my way home. And, I tell her what happened to, uh, I tell her what happened to, you know, uh, our friend, mm -hmm. you know, and she's crying a little bit. She's kind of upset about it, but now I'm, I'm the opposite. Now I'm like, don't feel sorry for me. Yeah. I don't care. It's, it's family. Right? Um, yeah. So now I'm like opposite feelings, right? Like I, yeah. the whole, a whole, uh, pendulum, yeah. right. Of like yeah. poor me to like fucking yeah. this, right. How dare and, I feel bad for like, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. I go home and she's still kind of crying a little bit and I'm like, nah, don't, don't. She's like, no, we got to talk. <laughs> Right, you've heard this story. Yeah, yeah, I know where this goes. And anytime a super hot chick, yeah, it's like, hey, no, we got to talk. I'm like, great. We're in this little town home that she paid for the first month for. Yeah, because I couldn't afford it yet. Yep. We got to talk. I'm like, all of a oh. sudden, you're thinking this dick ain't that good anymore. Nope. Huh? Maybe it's not that but good. But it was. <laughs> and uh, but I'm thinking like, oh, we're breaking up or something. I kind of make a comment, and she's like, what? No. And I, long story short, man, I go to the kitchen, and there's an envelope, and we're pregnant. And I was like. Just dude, I, that was for the, the it's a first lot going on in the, in the, the first time yeah. in my life I felt numb. Like I literally, I like I didn't know, like I knew how I should feel. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't feel any of it. I didn't, I wasn't sad. I wasn't happy. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't scared. I was just like caught in a moment and I was numb. And then a couple weeks later, we found out we were having a boy. And I just, man, I just, little boys want to be you. They don't want to be like you. They want to be you. So I started thinking of everything I had done in life and all this cool shit. And that was cool for about five minutes until I figured out, oh, cool dad isn't even around because all the cool shit I've ever done is before he's born. Yeah. So now I'm just going to be, and I'm like, but that got me to attach to like what I did in the Marine Corps that made me such a great Marine and what I did in other careers that made me great at it. And like, why am I not being that dude in real estate? Why am I wearing this fucking tie? Yeah. If it's not for me, right. I got buddies that wear it and, sure. it, and it, works, it fits it them. It works for some people and that's not, and that's them. But, if it's not, but oh. for me, it's like, yo, I got to make real yeah. estate fit me. I can't yeah. fit real estate. And that's where like the paradigm shift happened right so then from there dude like it was like man we're, we're, we were great on video at fit republic we did a lot of events we we're great on video we need to be doing that because if people can see me and hear me then they're going to get a feeling for me they'll have the opportunity to know i can trust me which means me being different is a is a benefit and they can right? see you before they have to meet you and know hey i want to work with this guy or i don't want it's to. that versus yeah. like a blind date from like yeah. a, a online lead i show up and like hey bro i'm here hey. to show you a house and you're like the i tattoos? feel like i owe you money yeah what the hell? yeah yeah but block, if you're, if you're great at what window. you do, people will listen to yeah. you, man. They'll do it. So long story short, man, I did 34 deals my first year. I think I was like 240 grand. And then I think I made six, six something the year after. And then it's been, it's been over seven figures and counting every year. Mm -hmm. But it was really just identifying with my past skill sets, my past just professions. Your skill and, and taking and what works here. for you and making it yeah. work for you. And, it's, and saying laser focus in that lane, right? You know, I talk about my mom, right? About like how strong she was to not mention the Marine Corps. And just let me just yeah. let me go do my thing, no matter how hard it was for her to just let her only son, yeah. her baby, and yeah. I'm her favorite kid. I have a text message screenshot. She finally admitted <laughs> I was her favorite kid. Let him go go to go to the Marine Corps. Yeah. On my son's year anniversary, I was I was out on the back patio with with Kate, my significant other, and I was like, Hey, remember like when you told me? Because then we're like reminiscing, right? It's a year. It's a year. It's his first birthday. I'm like, Remember when you told me? We were pregnant and she's like, yeah, of course. And I just was like, thank you for being so strong and like letting me not respond how you probably thought I would respond, right? About like being so happy and oh yeah. my God, I'm going to be a dad. And, and not this. give me shit for not being that. So context, it, right? I yeah. have a stepdaughter. She's mine. Mm -hmm. She's never had a father, yeah. but that was Same here. Kate's daughter, right? And she's 13 now, but I got Chloe when, right when she had turned five. But here's what's crazy, dude. You think something is like so big or someone's being so strong, right? So I'm thanking Kate, like, Kate, hey, just thank for being, thank you for being so strong in that moment. Cause she's like, are you okay? She asked me if I was okay. I said, I'm okay. I'm just numb. Like, it's just been a crazy day with this news and that. And she's like, I completely understand. I was like, I'm going to take a shower. And she's like, no problem. So I'm literally a year, a year later on my son's birthday, I'm thanking her for how strong she was. And she was like, she's like, babe, I'm just glad you didn't ask me to get rid of it. Mm. And that's you're like, so you're not because that's right. what someone told her when she was mm. pregnant with Chloe. Mm. This guy that's never been yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. When she broke the news to him, he wanted her to ah. get rid of the baby. So here I am thinking she's being this thing for me. Right. And what's so crazy, and this is what's such a blessing about strong women or just strong people in your life. I'm in this moment of being told I'm a father, and like I'm I'm at like level eight, nine, nine and a half capacity of like feeling and, and just stress and she in like me going through that wasn't anything for her yeah because she was just thankful i was I, yeah. I didn't want to get rid of the baby and you and like it's just crazy how like you think you've had it tough it's all perspective and then there's someone that's had it oh, tougher yeah. you know and oh, it's yeah. like but you but you appreciate like i appreciate it's so crazy i appreciate that she's been through certain things that made her tougher and more prepared to then be able to support me in my moment when I'm not tough. She was who she was able to be because of what she had gone through. Yeah. And then allowed me to, to just have that moment and not, not ridicule me, not judge me, not anything. Just let me transition and have a just moment keep, because of, because of what she's been through. And it's like, that, like it's such a gift of like, Hey, what must be, you know, or giving her the shit later for man, I really wish you'd have been excited. You weren't even fucking excited. Like no expectation. And never, right. And get and not getting that's huge. Cause like, yeah, you're excited. You mm -hmm. know, because you're going through a bunch of other shit too. Yep. And for her to like calculate all that, say, listen, let them be. That's huge because a lot of men need that. A lot of men don't need the. It just makes you so thankful for yeah. like when you have people in your life that like have gone through things and transitioned well from it. Mm. You're so appreciative for their strength. 
Because then it lets you have a moment, man. Imagine when imagine when you're the biggest person in your circle and you got to be everything for everybody. Yeah. When you have a moment, it all comes fucking falling down versus like this little five foot two, 115 <laughs> pound pretty girl, yeah. right? Who's very soft spoken and unassuming is is being significantly stronger than me in a moment and like gift. Yeah. Huge. Gift. Huge, very man. And like, but that was huge for me, man, because she let me just be comfortable in like my discomfort and work through some of that. And it was her idea about real estate. You know, she paid for my online course, you know? So like, there's just some cool stuff there that allowed me to really bloom. Yeah. And like, dude, look at where I'm at now. Yeah. So it's like, it's just really cool, man. And like, I've been, what we talk about, we talk about, you know, God, and we talk about just things that have been sent to you in life. And we, I'm looking at your producer. (laughs) We fucking, we know, we know what you're at. You got some, he's like, puts this devil, the, the irony that you have a Satan <laughs> snow globe, like this globe idea is from Santa Claus, which comes from God, yeah. and then you put Satan. Santa in Claus it. not come from God. Let's not get into uh, Saint, that. Saint, no, Saint. It's a pagan holiday. Yeah. Just, <laughs> but just the you know like just know between going. Kate and my mother, man, it's like really blessed with like just strong women, and like so, I'm I'm appreciative. So financially, things have been going well, and it kind of seems like an upswing mostly, right? Yep. But from the outside looking in, you could look at your success. And say, okay, it's only been up for you. But I know that's not true just because nope. I know I just know reality when anybody who's successful, it's not all fucking hand jobs, unicorns. Nope. It, it doesn't go up like this. It goes up and down. So where was your first like you had some confidence because you're making it. And then all of a sudden, what was your first like down not downfall, but what was your first like hit? <laughs> Jacking first, off. What was your first kick in the dick? Here we go. You got are you cool with a jack off yeah, story? So, all right, cool. I know, I know the story. So, Let's hear it. Yeah. The, jack-off story. the beanbag story. Yeah, you know yeah, that story? Yeah. yeah. I told you that? Yeah. I was probably jacking off when you I told probably, you Probably. You forget things. I don't forget shit. Oh, I know. I know. I've forgotten more about business. Than I know. Oh, shit. Here no, I'm go. kidding. Here we go. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, man. So, like, we get out of this one-bedroom townhome. We had a lease there for about, four, you know, 12 months, 14 months. This is after my first year of real estate, so I'm, make, I'm making some money, but we need to, you know, we need to, we have a son now yep. with our daughters, a one-bedroom townhome, just too small. So, we find this little rental house um that's that's bigger it's a three-bedroom two-story house and it's four houses from kate's parents on the same side of the street it's perfect right but it's 2500 a month so i'm going from 1400 to you know 2500 so it's enough jump of like all right like i'm yeah. good but i'm in an all commission business like yeah i've been doing good but i gotta stay doing good yep. to be able to afford this and long story short man like our we were there for about three years and our business in those three years skyrocketed between you know youtube and events, and I'm, I know we'll get into the details on some of that, but just yeah. between between scaling our business to get in front of more clients that brought in more transactions, sells and buys, yeah. right? We're licensed realtors. Around this upswing. Sells and buys. We had all of this, like, you know, we started making 600 plus a year, and but I'm in this house that only cost me 2,500 bucks, and I caught myself, man. Like, Eli was on my business partner. He was at, it was like Thanksgiving, or I don't know where he was at, but he was like on vacation for whatever reason we were working from home. And like I got my to dos, my mandatories done in the morning, mm-hmm. and then midday ESPN is on. I remember like laying down on this oversized beanbag we had in the living room, and watching ESPN just beat my fucking dick, being lazy, right? Second day, same thing. Third day, I go to lay down and I go, "What the fuck am I doing?" Mm. Like I got all my mandatories done. You're just hovering immediately. But then there's no, there's right? no, like, I'm not doing any self initiating tasks. Yeah. I'm not growing anything. Mm-hmm. I'm just taking care of, like, all the to do's and everything we've yeah. already built. And I'm Baseline like, Baseline shit, right? I was like, fuck, I'm bored. And I figured out that the lifestyle I was living no longer required all of me. Mm. Rent, 2,500, truck, 700, yep. 600. But we're making significantly more than $3,000, right? Yeah. So I just, I got bored. Mm-hmm. I got, you know, it's like, mm. so dude, I don't know, within like 60 days, 90 days, you know, I call my lender from the bean bag, right? Like pull my pants back up. <laughs> Probably not. Probably didn't. And I'm talking to he him. Didn't. He didn't have any pants <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm talking to him. I'm like, dude, what can I afford? Let's just go over it. And within 90 days, we're in a $3.1 million home, man. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And I'll tell you what, I didn't, I don't even know if I sat in that house. It was probably a little bit of overkill, you know, but like what I explain to people when they talk to me about like the house I live in or the cars that I drive, I go first and foremost, you know, some of these were dreams and I'm going to check that box. Having a Lamborghini as a kid was a dream and you feel really cool accomplishing a childhood dream for me. Yep. Secondly, man, like I want to live a certain lifestyle now. I'm not going to save all my money for retirement to, to go on cruise ships and whatever the do weird shit with old people. I want to do that now, by the way. 
Right. He's got uh, his own OnlyFans account for that. Maybe. <laughs> but I, I want to live a certain lifestyle now, but like what sure. what a certain lifestyle does for me, dude, is it's my gas line. Pressure. When pe- yeah, dude. Yeah. And I, so yeah, what you call pressure. pressure, I call gas line. So when people okay. ask me, it's like, hey, dude, like, how do you wake up and get after it every day, et cetera, et cetera? I'm like, well, first and foremost, quitting was off the table a long time ago because yeah. of my fucking baseball scab. Yep. And because how I was built from the from the amazing men that built me in the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. The shit's just gone. I'm not a bitch. Yep. That's that. If you are if you are a bitch because you've never gone through certain things and I'm being facetious and you're like, man, I'm I'm young or I'm new to something, like I'm still I, I haven't gone through all that to yeah. harden me. Yeah. Then whatever you're doing right now, whatever entrepreneurship thing you're doing, that's gonna be the thing that hardens you. Yeah. And it will will, how do I do it? Get around the right people. Because I was around the right like in the Marine Corps, it hardened me. Yeah. But I had the right men leading me that created that. Right. right. So Line like for me. There you go. Yeah. So what regardless of what it is, you like you've got to find a, a good circle, but I like living a certain lifestyle now and having nice things. Mm. Quitting's been off the table for a long time, but the pressure of, hey, if I like living a certain way, I got to make sure I'm out there getting after it every single yeah, day. Gotta, and I don't, I don't live above my means. Sure, you know, like I like. It's, There's levels to this too. You can go too far. I'm like, oh, you go too far to stress you out. Fuck, you got to find your power band. Yep. So I'm in my power band. Yep. Of a couple cars and a nice house and nothing crazy, but I appreciate them and they're fun. And my family lives in a beautiful home. You know, we're sending our kid, you know, to to just different volleyball stuff and mm-hmm. just private schools and, and cool shit that we yeah. want to do as a family. But it's just enough to keep me in my power band of like, dude, when I wake up in the morning, I got I got things to get after. And it's it doesn't feed me every day, right? Like my ambition and what I want to accomplish feeds me every day. But on the days that are a little harder than others, that's where the pressure of just maintaining what you have, it just requires more from you and and then ultimately, in addition to that, man, we're, I mean, we've got a couple hundred realtors that work for us now and right. showing up for other people. It's you know, like you yeah. quit on yourself all day. You got to oh, be yeah. a sorry motherfucker if you're going to quit on that, others. Man, yesterday at, at the gym, right? Yep. Um, I get this DM. I told this story on my um, Instagram story is you know, I get a DM from Cam. He's like, hey, man, we're deadlifting tonight. And, and last time they were doing that, I told him, hey, man, next time you guys do that, invite me. I want to come to check it out because it's yeah. a cool little gym. And I like deadlifting a little bit to the point of like, I don't really like it, but when I do heavy numbers, it's fun. Right? Yeah. But I don't like it before that. So he hits me up. I go there, and and we're fucking around. And, and I actually got there a little bit late because I was stuck here a little bit later than I wanted to be. But I get there, and they're about wrapped up. But a couple of guys are still going, and I start warming up and get to my numbers. And I'm like, there's three or four guys. They're kind of scattered throughout the gym now. They're not really in the deadlift area. And I'm like, Cam, get those guys over here. You know, they're younger kids too. And I'm like. Get them yelling and screaming, you know, like let's get them. You know. <laughs> yeah, so man. I'm not gonna fucking. I'm not gonna not get it. Get the atmosphere these, going. These young kids are yeah. looking at me like, here's this old man that lives in two twenty five. Right. Fuck yeah. And then I get it, and I was. And you saw the video. I was shaking. I was not not getting it. Yeah. Right? So that's huge. Having people, and in any degree, right? Not letting someone else down. Sometimes you're more. You do more for that than you will yourself. And you got so, the temporary like that, where you just yep. want to show some kids how it's done, and and because that jazzes them up. And then yep. you got the long term of like. Right, license agents working for you day in and day out. Like you want to make sure you yep. provide year in and year out well, to just, make sure I they're think, accomplishing their goals. And the point is, like, it doesn't matter if it's like a influence. It's it's a little bit of whether it be short term, long term. It's just how we're wired. Oh yeah. It's like I don't want to let myself down. That's again, that's off the table. It's been off the table for years. I really don't want to let anybody else down. If, I, yeah. if someone else is looking at me for anything, I let them down. That's way worse than me because that me and me is me. But yep. like anybody else letting down, it's it's huge. And now and, family, right? Yeah. That and again, that's been off the table for a while. I'm not letting them down. But like knowing that it's about yourself. Of that shit. Yeah, knowing yeah. what fuels you, man. Like every, like others might have different things that, that motivate them or or who knows. Cool. Yeah. Or fuels them. I like the word fuel versus motivate. Motivate is temporary. Yeah. But yeah. the bottom line is just like knowing who you are, knowing your weakness is a strength. It's like knowing yeah. where knowing what you don't like or where you're weak at, identifying those things and mitigating it or just putting someone in your spot if you can. So you don't have to. hundred yeah. percent, right? Yeah. Like it's huge. And just finding like, hey, this is how I play ball, right? Mm-hmm. Like one of the analogies I always use is quarterbacks. The way Tom Brady plays quarterback yeah. is not the same as Patrick Mahomes. Right. They play the same position. They're playing their game, but they got to play their game, and they got to make it fit the way that they play the game. And you're not going to get Patrick Mahomes to be Tom Brady in the pocket. Not nope. that he can't throw from the pocket sometimes, but Some that's same. not where he gets amazing. Like, But yeah. Tom, Tom couldn't run out of the pocket. Right. It ain't fucking happening. Him scrambling is not a good plan. But boy, was he right. smart. And boy, yeah. did he know certain things to where like he didn't have to, and he got rid of that ball so quick. Mm-hmm. But again, it's like... When you're looking at play it without getting too complicated, it's like you gotta strengths. play you gotta play your game, man. Yeah. Like and that's the same thing of me making real estate fit me. Yeah. And then just understanding the tools and the skill sets that like, hey, how how do I make sure if I'm making real estate fit me, how do I get myself to everybody? 
and dude, video, man, like building your brand, yeah. building your business, utilizing video. It's huge because it gives these people opportunity, man, to just second.